Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. Today have I got a fun project for you. We're going to turn this whimsical little wooden elf project. These are just so cute. They're so much fun and easy to turn. You can easily turn on a mini lathe. Uh, you don't even need a chuck. All a chuck might make, it, might make it easier. Heck, you can even use carbide tools. You can turn them into a Christmas tree ornament or you can just set them on a shelf, kind of like an elf on a shelf. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Kurt Fuller for his concept. Uh, I saw his picture on a wood turning forum and, and that's inspired these, uh, these wooden elves. Here's what we're starting with, uh, about a one and a half inch square block, about five to eight inches long and some fur and here's what it looks like. We're going to uh, turn this between centers, so mark centers. And then we're going to bring up the uh, tool sport, turn it, make sure we got clearance, adjust the height, uh, tighten everything down real good. We're going to use our spindle roughing gouge and we're going to turn this thing round. One of the things I notice, uh, I'm checking the height here, uh, too many uh, novice turners use the spindle roughing gouge scraping instead of going uh, very carefully with anchor the tool, lifting the handle until it's uh, right riding the belt and lifting the handle till it cuts and here we are we're just just turning it round a little bit at a time check see if it's if it's round just the the tool rest so we can round it off on the left hand side and I'm taking a skew just kind of clean it up a little bit get a little little finer surface. Notice the slicing action coming at a 45 degrees. Now here's uh, the model that we're we're uh, using and as I said this is about five to eight inches long. We mark off uh, just a old quarter of an inch on the end where it's going to be waste uh, where the tailstock live center is actually penetrated. So we mark the the main features with a pencil. Start taking it down a little bit kind of so we can kind of guide our eye. Now we do some bulk removal. Notice how you can roll over the spindle roughing gouge if it's shaped straight across. Uh, I'm going to use a skew to make a V, v cut, which to me is the easiest way to start a bead is to make a V cut with a skew on each side. And then we're going to, of course, we're going to take that down. That's way too big, but just, just marking the features right here. And now I switch to a 3 8 inch spindle gouge and start rolling over the little ball that we're going to have on the top of the hat. It's got to come down quite a bit so I just keep keep bringing it down and rolling it over. Ride the bevel. Try to get rid of the tool, tool marks. Now I come back to, to the hat, uh, the rim, and uh, going to reduce the area a little bit below. Now I do some bulk removal again with a spindle roughing gouge. Again, notice how I bring it up on the side to be able to get right into the shoulder. Uh, and that works real, real well. And we're going to speed through some of this, uh, this roughing, roughing out. I'm using pine just because it's uh, it's cheap, inexpensive, readily available. And actually, for this project, uh, two by four construction pine is is not a bad wood for this project, and most everybody's got some on on hand. Now that I've did some bulk uh, removal with spindle roughing gouge, I come back and and do a little final detail shaping with that three eighths inch detail gouge. Uh, half inch detail gouge or spindle gouge would work work fine as well as whatever you're preferred tool. The 3 8 inch is kind of my workhorse spindle uh, spindle tool. Carefully removing any tool marks. Come back, roll that bead over that detail on the hat rim on both sides. Low pressure, very low pressure with pine because boy, it'll it'll cut in a heartbeat. We come back and I'm gonna kind of got it shaped. Now I'm gonna use some of that sanding butter. I'll have a uh, there'll be a link to that video here. 
uh, it reduces the uh, fine uh, sanding uh, dust. Now that I've gone through the grits, I've rushed through those, I'm using a similar process uh, with diatomaceous earth in it, uh, a sanding abrasive, and we come back to get rid of those fine detail scratches. Uh, I put it on there, smooth it out first before I turn the lathe on, and then you just keep it moving and it takes out those fine, fine details or the fine scratches. And you keep turning it over till you get it, get it clean. Now I'm using some uh, uh, friction uh, polish, uh, Crystal Hut. Uh, it's a shellac based. I put it on there and then turn it at pretty high speed and get the temperature up a little bit till it flashes off. Now we're going to finish cutting off that uh, the end of this between centers, gradually holding on to it, and I switch the detail gouge uh, or spindle gouge to to cut the end off and turns out I'm still gonna have to cut the nib off the pocket knife but that's no big deal touch it up with a bit of bit of sandpaper okay you want to make one of these projects and you need to turn a nose out of a very small piece of wood how do you do it if you don't have a scroll chuck let me show you a technique you put a sacrificial block of wood onto your face plate then you drill it with a drill bit that's going to match it's got a small hole in it, it's a little off center, but it shouldn't affect this drilling operation. I take off a little bit of this excess length here before I start shaping the nose and rush through that a little bit and here's what the nose looks like. Here's another technique for turning something small if you don't have chuck jaws. You're going to put a piece of wood, oh in this case about a one inch, one inch square, and then turn it around. Now we're going to we made us a little jig uh, by using, comparing a Morse taper, measuring at a, a distance in between those two points. We've got these two different diameters. So we're going to first turn this bottom down. Getting close. We're going to mark, mark a distance here. For this other measurement, we got to turn it round. Put a slight chamfer on it. So we got our template fitting at the end. We have it fitting a little further up. And we're not going to get too precise on this. I'm going to take this out of the way. The battery died on, on the camera, but I tapped it in, and now I'm just turning this little, little nose. Now I put a one quarter inch tenon with a slight taper. Use my quarter inch tenon template. Okay. And now I simply taper this to a point, make it a little easier to fit. have that nose. Probably should have sanded it. I can sand it by hand. But doesn't that be perfect? And my favorite production technique is to use this collet chuck. I've got a review. I'll have a link above here if you're interested in looking at that. Uh, but you fit the appropriate collet in there and you can either use a dowel or you could use a square that you rip depending on, you know, you rip it to appropriate size. 
I can do this by hand. It's also got some, you know, tummy, tummy bars. Uh, but with that, I can go ahead and turn another one. And as I turn it, I can pull it out and do another one, pull it out and do another one because the rod goes in. Heck, I could have a three-foot rod extending all the way through the, the spindle stock. Perhaps you've got a chuck, and, and you've got a chuck with a set of appropriate jaws such as these pin jaws, or possibly a set of uh, spigot uh, jaws. They all work, but if you don't have that, what do you do? Let me show you. One technique you can use for small short pieces like this, whether it's a dowel or square, is simply use the uh, jaw uh, glides, or carriers if you will, to clamp it, and for small items like this, this is going to turn very well. Let me show you. You can see how true this is running. The, this is not a bad way as long as you're not projecting out very far. And then again use some abrasive paste to kind of clean up after I've already sanded this. And then I part it off. No problem. Whoops. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to drill a hole using a V-block for the nose. But don't drill too deep like I do here. <laughs> and it went all the way through it. But I learned my lesson. On the next next one I I put a little tape on it. I should have done that earlier. Just just a good good handy technique. If you've gotten this far in the video, you must be getting something out of it. So please hit the like button to, uh, and subscribe. Thank you very much and back to the video. My wife picked up a, uh, a yard, far more than I needed, of faux fur from Hobby Lobby. You can get it at other places including Amazon. I'll have a link below for some Amazon, excuse me, some Amazon uh, uh, sources. Uh, the fur on this is about, uh, you know, one and a half to two inches long, which I like. Uh, she also picked up some smaller stuff, uh, some trim that, you know, the fur is about three quarters of an inch. I don't like this as, as well. So we're going to cut off a little piece of that, like this. Uh, I cut it a little bit round at the edge. Since the diameter here is slightly smaller, you might cut this just a little bit to uh, bring it round. I would cut it uh, a little bit shorter than the wood, like this. Alright, adding the full fur is the most difficult part of this whole operation. The turning, <laughs> they're so simple, it's a piece of cake. So once you cut out your fur, what I found, and if you've got any better ideas, please leave them in the comments below, but what I found the easiest way for me seemed to be measure the distance from the, underneath the, the hat to the center of the nose, transfer that with a little dot to be the center of your cut. Then you make a little X, a quarter inch to accommodate that that nose. I say a quarter inch, it's not something you gotta measure, just you know cut a little slot across and then down in the center of that. What you don't want to do is try to drill a hole for it. Let me show you what's going to happen. Not a pretty picture. Okay, just a few more goofy tips uh, based on me turning several of them. Uh, I enter the back with the nose to kind of spread the fur. Then I can easily turn around and poke that through the hole. And then what I do is go ahead and stick these in like this ready for glue up. So I've got all of them ready to go because they're all slightly different sizes. That way I can just easily pull this out, put a little, put a drop or two of CA in there, poke the nose all the way down in there and then I'm ready to use a, a hot melt glue. Now you can you can glue the fur on here with a uh, small craft gun, but for those of y'all who are not familiar, I did a review a while back, I'll have a link to that video up here in the corner, 
there's a huge difference between these tiny little, I think they're quarter inch, uh, glue sticks, 10 watts, versus a uh, more industrial one, which is 100 watts, and it uses a much bigger um, glue stick, gets much, much hotter, and this is the kind you can use on glue blocks and face plates and that sort of thing. So if you're going to go buy one, don't get one of these little bitty craft pieces of crap. Get, get something that's uh, you know closer to 100 watts. It'll get it a lot hotter. One more tip. The fur has a direction just like your dog. So when you cut it, cut it in the right direction and cut your nose slot in the right on the right side. Don't ask me how I learned that. Well, I hope this project inspired you to uh, turn one of these wooden wooden elves. If you find some little little trick, I'd appreciate it uh, posting it in the comments. Y'all stay safe and come on back here.